evening a very good evening i hope and i believe all of you are doing well yes uh, before we proceed with the session a quick note whether the audio visual is all good so that we can proceed with the session right so at least i can see the visual is good guys you can give me a confirmation for the audio as well whether the audio is good all right so hello everyone welcome to today's youtube live session where it's gonna be interesting radiology cases so which are going to be challenging cases um i would say not very difficult if you think very clinically and conceptually in an integrated manner so this session will basically tell you the role of radiology when it plays a very very important role in getting to a diagnosis right so how we differentiate the various things and how it is important to save a patient's life as well so uh in the today session as i told you it's the radiology cases and i i'm sure all of you know about the plus subscription which gives you access to the unlimited courses on the platform you can choose your batch based on whether you are in your undergraduate days or you are appearing for neat pg inict or fmg or the 2022 exam so you also have iconic subscription which is the an academy with prep ladder that is live and recorded both along with the question bank and the video lectures of prep ladder and the iconic subscription especially the undergraduate students here uh, please uh, make a note of this there's this limited uh, period offer for your iconic and uh, there's also this 3 plus 1 and there is 12 plus 2 offer which is for a limited period so make sure you make the best of this the new batches are starting on 9th of june right the new batches are starting on 9th of june tomorrow for everyone next 2022 neat pg the second prof batch as well is starting tomorrow and fmg students there's a great announcement for you there's a free grand test series the first of which is on 11th of june 10 am when you are joining the test series or the free live classes or the subscription you can use my code dr nikita live or you can use any code basically which will give you additional benefit while subscribing or attending the live classes right now uh, let us start with the first question here so let us see who gets this right the first some questions you will have uh, uh, multiple options some questions will be like spotters so 61 year old lady presenting with vague abdominal pain for 2 months what is the diagnosis all right so i see mixed answers coming here everyone needs to participate here let's see what is your thought process and uh, how radiology helps in coming to a diagnosis and prevents the patient from surgery or biopsy okay so i see here mixed answers basically between b and d that is where the confusion is whether this is mucinous or this is pancreatic serous cyst adenoma so before we actually come to the answer and we see this case let's see the background you know ki actually what is the uh, you know the facts that you should know about pancreatic cystic neoplasms okay so some rapid fire questions here is it female or is it male kis mein zyada common hota hai pancreatic cystic neoplasms where do we have pancreatic cystic neoplasms are more common in male or in female yes absolutely so rachna remembers the mnemonic remember it is more common in females okay it is more common just a second let me get the pen here all right so your pancreatic cystic neoplasms are more common in female than in male except for one ek at least yaad rakhna the one which is more common in males is your 
IPMN, the intraductal pancreatic mucinous neoplasm is the one which is more common in males. Then in your cystic ones, you have your serous. Okay, you have serous, you have mucinous and you have your spen. Solid pseudopapillary vala tumor, right? So we have serous, we have mucinous and we have spen. So based on the age as well, the clinical history, the age is very, very important to help us, uh, you know, narrow down the differentials. So which is the one which is present in the elderly? So since it is in female, we will remember this as daughter, mother and grandmother. Okay, we will remember this as daughter, mother and grandmother. Which is the one which is present in daughter, which is the one which is present in mother and which is the one which is present in grandmother. So the trick to remember this, the mnemonic is daughter who is a young daughter looks very solid. Okay, daughter very solid dikti hai. So it is your solid wala tumor. Mother, M for M, it is the mucinous neoplasm. Serous is the one which is present in the elderly grandmother age. So when a female becomes a grandmother, old age mein she becomes very serious. Right, so grandmother is very serious. So grandmother is serous, mucinous is mother and your daughter, the young patients, females is your spen. And spen is the one which is progesterone receptor positive. So young females may, right? And the other thing to be remembered, IPMN is more common in males. Now coming to your serous versus mucinous. What is the difference radiologically? So serous is more of your microcystic. Okay, it is microcystic. So it gives this bunch of grapes appearance and the mucinous is generally your unilocular large cyst, unilocular large cyst. Serous may the calcification is in the center. There is your central sunburst calcification. So remember serous S for central. Okay, that is how we will write central calcification is present in the uh, serous and you can remember this mucinous is like mural calcification. Mucinous is mural. That means it is your peripheral calcification, right? That's your peripheral calcification. Now, let us have a look at the images here. Okay, let us have a look at the image. This is your contrast enhanced CT. Okay, this is a contrast enhanced CT. Where are we seeing the lesion, right? It, just give me a moment. I'll change the pen color so that all of you will be able to identify this. So this is where we see this lesion. Okay, this is where we see this lesion. And this is the central calcification. Okay, what do we see in this image is this is basically your entire pancreas and in the region of pancreatic head. We have the cystic lesion. Why do we call it cystic? The gray color like the fluid, that is how it is. Look at the gray fluid in the stomach. Look at the gray color of the lesion. And what do we see here? This is your dilated pancreatic duct. Okay, the large mass is causing the compression of the pancreatic duct. And that is how we see the dilated pancreatic duct. So this we call as your upstream dilatation okay this is the upstream dilatation matlab yaha mass hai uske pehle jo aapka pancreatic duct hai upstream that is dilated because of the compression while which is the tumor which will give your downstream dilatation which is the tumor which will give the downstream dilatation that is your ipmn ipmn causes your downstream dilatation of the pancreatic duct why is it downstream intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm so it is intraductal so if this is the main pancreatic duct you have the side branches this tumor is present within the duct maybe the main duct or the side duct okay the side branch and it is secreting a lot of mucin so this if you uh, consider ki yaha pe lesion hai because of the increased mucin production it will be this part of the pancreatic duct which will be dilated. So this is your downstream dilatation. While in your serous, it is the upstream dilatation. Because of the compression here, it is your upstream dilatation which is present. So that's the difference. And how do we diagnose a case of IPMN? IPMN is the one which will communicate with the duct. Okay, it will communicate with the duct. So this duct communication, if there's a lesion communicating with the duct, 
द इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज योर एम आर सी पी ओके बिकॉज योर पैनक्रियाटिक डक इज वेल सीन ऑन एम आर सी पी सो रिमेंबर दैट एम आर सी पी इज द इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू इस्टेब्लिश दिस डक्टल कम्युनिकेशन सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट फॉर आई पी एम एन मेल्स डाउन स्ट्रीम डायलिटेशन डक्ट कम्युनिकेशन इस्टेब्लिश्ड ऑन एम आर सी पी इफ नॉट एम आर सी पी then ercp so in our case it's a 61 year old lady that means grandmother age so this is your serous you see the central calcification so that tells you that this is serous okay so now if i ask you what are the chances of malignancy this serous cyst adenoma turning into malignancy is it less or is it more serous may calcification serous cyst adenoma of pancreas is it benign or it has high chances of turning into malignancy remember that it is benign very rare cases it might turn malignant but generally it does not turn malignant so if the patient is asymptomatic incidentally detected then we don't need to do anything just surveillance wo bhi sirf one year ke liye to see the growth how it is growing otherwise if the patient is symptomatic then we need to do surgery so like in this patient where you have pain because of the mass if there are other symptoms of pancreatic insufficiency or something then we should do the surgery otherwise you can manage it conservatively nothing to be done okay so this is about the first one pancreatic cystic neoplasms important for your inict exam okay this is important for inict Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is an interesting case here. The next one. 25-year-old woman presented to the emergency department with acute chest or right-sided abdominal pain with 5 days of evolution. The patient had okay, the patient had an IUCD inserted by an obstetrical nurse one month before the onset of symptoms. and then presented with abdominal pain and cramps after 2 weeks of the device being in place lab findings show elevated d dimer elevated inflammatory markers and wbcs are also raised she has a history of previous nizeria gonorrhea infection what do you think is the diagnosis based on this image so to make things easy for you i have put the arrows as well to tell you that where is the pathology so very interesting i'm sure this you must have read in gynecology i remember it still reading it in my final year from shaw's textbook of gynecology what do you think is the diagnosis okay so that's great nidish has got it right the first very good nidish that is your fitz hook curtis syndrome okay that's your fitz hook curtis the classical scenario which is given here is your 25 year old woman there is acute chest or right sided abdominal pain there is history of iucd there is previous nizeria gonorrhea infection and what is the ct scan showing what are we seeing on the ct the arrows are pointing to this area can someone tell me what are the findings here yes nidish what what are the findings in your what are the findings in ct scan what are these arrows showing what is the radiological finding very correct so fitz hook curtis syndrome also called as perihepatitis perihepatitis means yapka liver capsule is getting affected so this what you are seeing is the enhancement okay the enhancement along the liver capsule that is the enhancement along the liver capsule over a period of time fibrosis ho sakta hai delayed enhancement is what we see with fibrosis and in your video uh, laparoscopy we see violin string absolutely as all of you are mentioning violin string is very very important because of the adhesions there will be this violin string thing that we will see so remember radiologically it is your liver capsule enhancement the anterior liver capsule enhancement is what we see elevated d dimer might tell us ki bhai pulmonary embolism hai whether in this patient so ct pulmonary angiography was normal in this patient the other differentials right sided upper abdominal pain cholecystitis 
ultrasound will show the normal gallbladder appearance cholecystitis will be ruled out so this is where we see the abnormal enhancement okay this is where we see the abnormal enhancement so remember your fit fitz hook curtis syndrome also known as perihepatitis it is a relatively rare complication of pid and it is the inflammation of the liver capsule secondary to the genital tract infection right sided upper abdominal pain which can also be referred to the chest due to inflammatory process and on contrast enhanced ct characterized by abnormal enhancement and thickening of the anterior liver capsule all right so this is your fitz hook curtis syndrome all right let's go to the next one okay so some neuro radiology here yes some uh, neuro radiology here so the history here is this is a patient a known case of hypertension on presentation the blood pressure was 180 by 100 and the patient presented with seizures altered sensorium has seizures here what do you think is this showing okay so everyone knows this i told you in the today's uh, live class on the app ki i'll show you one case of press right so this is what is your press what is press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome it is posterior it is reversible but it is not always like posterior and reversible in in other cases posterior nahi involve ho sakta hai other areas might be involved it is not always reversible majority of the patients recover in some there might be focal neurological deficit and so in press the classical history you have the background history of hypertension generally aapke exam ke liye utna yaad rakho hypertension with seizures think of press some cases clinically hypertension also might not be there now why what do we see on the ct here and mri here so this is the ct scan because you see the white bone here on the ct scan this is where we are seeing the areas of hypodensity so generally it is bilateral symmetrical okay generally it's bilateral symmetrical that is what differentiates it from infarct kyunki infarct aapka generally one vessel unilateral focal this is bilateral symmetrical so that is why this is not infarct these are the bilateral symmetrical hypodensities occipital areas we commonly see in parieto occipital areas this is mri why is this mri because you see the black bone what sequence of mri is this anyone what sequence of mri is this and what sequence of mri is this one here what are these mri sequences image b and image c uh yes sanjeev i am soon uh, coming up with your fmg ke liye uh, last 10 days uh, rapid revision program i'll update you soon on that as well okay so this is your this is your flare sequence this is your flare sequence why we have discussed this in our classes flare is all black water black white matter black ye water black aapka white matter black this is a flare image and this one which looks similar to flare you know this looks similar to flare aapka water black aapka white matter black but you do not see the surrounding you do not see the surrounding bone and scalp very well so this is your dwi image and this one is your flare image okay so that is flare and dwi so that's great now look at how flare shows the pathology very well bilateral symmetrical hyper intense areas in the occipital lobe and will you call it restricted diffusion dikh raha hai ye area mein is there restricted diffusion yes or no are the corresponding areas showing restricted diffusion so we have also discussed how do you say whether it is restricted diffusion yes or no now your restricted diffusion should show the signal opposite of csf kyunki csf matlab freely flowing hai facilitated diffusion hai csf ka ulta signal hai then it is restricted diffusion so here csf is black here you don't see the light bulb jaisa ki something is lighting up so there is no restricted diffusion dwi ke baad hum adc dekhte hain 
डी डब्ल्यू आई पर ब्राइट एरियाज नहीं है तो हम ए डी सी नहीं देखेंगे नाउ इफ यू लुक एट दिस फ्लेयर इमेज वट डू यू थिंक इज दिस वेसोजेनिक एडिमा और दिस इज साइटोटॉक्सिक एडिमा वाई एम आई आस्किंग यू दिस इज बिकॉज इट इज साइटोटॉक्सिक एडिमा विच वी सी इन इनफाक्ट साइटोटॉक्सिक सेल डेथ से एडिमा इनफाक्ट में दैट शोज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड डिफ्यूजन वेसोजेनिक एडिमा डज नॉट शो योर रेस्ट्रिक्टेड डिफ्यूजन सो योर वाइट मैटर एडिमा इफ यू लुक एट द एडिमा हियर it is in the white matter your cortex per se is not involved so this is your vasogenic cortex is the one which has the cell bodies that is cytotoxic so white matter ye vasogenic edema hai isiliye we are not seeing the restricted diffusion here in fact has cytotoxic edema and that is why it shows restricted diffusion right so this is another important point to differentiate press from rest of the differentials press me restricted diffusion is not there because it is vasogenic edema now why there is vasogenic edema because of the extreme rise in blood pressure auto regulation is lost the blood brain barrier especially in the posterior area does not function well and that is why there is vasogenic edema vascular permeability bad jayegi okay so remember that it is your uh vasogenic edema no restricted diffusion very very important point to remember here so this is press all right and uh, if you follow up this patient after a week or so you will see the decrease in the signal restriction main yahan pe ye hai the underlying etiology hypertension hai eclampsia hai usko control karo nothing else needs to be done this is reversible okay majority of the cases this is reversible so very very important press they can also give you a history of postpartum patient with seizures eclampsia that is your press okay remember this press let's go to the next one okay so this is very very interesting and this is an extra edge challenging case so you have the images here all right you have the images here actually this is one patient and this is other patient but the diagnosis is one this is to show you the features in this uh, image so i am looking for someone who can make a diagnosis here nahi to then i'll start giving you clues like clue 1 clue 2 let me see if any one of you can diagnose let me just clear the frame for you anyone what do you think is the diagnosis here so i'll start giving you the clues this is very very interesting okay so preeti says uh, preeti prabhu says this is ms no this is not ms why this is not ms look at the hyper intensity in the basal ganglia okay basal ganglia mein hyper intensity hai haloverdens parts karthik haloverdens parts shows your shows your haloverdens parts shows eye of tiger sign in globus pallidus wo yahan nahi dikh raha hai okay this is not mts this is not mts as well mts classically they will show you the prominent temporal horn right the hippocampal atrophy wo bhi nahi hai cjd bhi nahi hai this is not cjd as well that's a good differential but this is not cjd no this is not adrenal leukodystrophy that's a very good thought dr sarvesh because you are seeing corpus callosum mein kuch to hai This is not adrenal. Aya kahi answer abhi tak nahi. Okay, no, I don't have any more images to show you here. So you have to make a diagnosis. These are like the classical images that will come. देखो. Tigroid pattern कहाँ दिख रहा है? कहीं नहीं दिख रहा है tigroid pattern. There's no tigroid pattern. No MLD. no okay so i don't see answer here i'll start giving you the clues here okay i'll start giving you the clues here uh sabse major clue ho jayega yahan pe agar main aapko clinical history batau so pehle difficult wala deti hu let's say this is a patient who had a psychiatric problem and this patient has had some drug overdose that has resulted in a metabolic abnormality so drug overdose resulted in metabolic abnormality so i've given you these two clues ड्रग ओवर डोज विथ मेटाबोलिक एबनॉर्मैलिटी नो काना वन नो कार्डासिल क्लू मैंने दे दिया ओके सो इट्स अ मेटाबोलिक एबनॉर्मैलिटी वेरी वेरी कॉमन मेटाबोलिक एबनॉर्मैलिटी ओके सो अदर मेजर क्लू आई गिव यू इज 
other major clue is it's a very common metabolic abnormality that you might see in neonates it can cause convulsions in neonates random mat bolo images bhi dekho aur clinical correlate karo pontine myelinolysis ke liye kahan dikh raha hai yahan pontine myelinolysis there's no trident sign there's no trident sign okay no so this is not b6 deficiency this is not b6 deficiency you are right ki neonatal convulsions b6 is the thing that we think of but aur kuch bhi ho sakta hai bachchu mein jitters ho sakte hain neonate mein okay so okay let me give you another clue let's say now i change the history this is a diabetic patient who has had an overdose of a drug that this patient was taking diabetic patient overdose okay so jiva i can see uh, then has got this right this is hypoglycemia okay this is hypoglycemia so diabetic patient overdose of which drug cause your hypoglycemia pharmacology special class mein padha hai diabetic drugs we have seen all the mnemonics sulfonylureas insulin are the one which can cause hypoglycemia so overdose of these drugs can cause hypoglycemic encephalopathy so hypoglycemic encephalopathy classical classical findings here what do you see here again this is your diffusion weighted imaging aapka adc wala map hai yahan pe we see this area of restricted diffusion opposite of csf csf white hai yahan pe black hai restricted diffusion in the splenium of the corpus callosum right this is the splenium of corpus callosum anywhere else in this image where are we seeing restricted diffusion can you identify anatomically where is the restricted diffusion but where is the restricted diffusion dikh raha hai aapko anatomically no i would not say this is basal ganglia not basal ganglia this is the thalamus thalamus ke just baju mein comes your internal capsule so these areas black black areas that you see here restricted diffusion ke this is internal capsule posterior limb okay posterior limb of internal capsule i'm sure when you see this you'll remember hypoglycemic encephalopathy for sure splenium is involved posterior limb of internal capsule classically involved you have basal ganglia right this is the flare image here you have hyper intensity basal ganglia look at generally how your metabolic abnormalities they cause bilateral pathologies bilateral symmetrical kyunki wo system mein cause hai unilateral nahi hai bilateral hai classically you can see the hyper intensity in the insula as well insula mein hai this image i have shown you to tell you that cerebellum is not involved brain stem is not involved and thalami are not involved okay thalamus brain stem and cerebellum are spared okay remember this for hypoglycemic encephalopathy classical ye four sites yaad rakhna splenium posterior limb of internal capsule basal ganglia insula hippocampus these are involved brain stem cerebellum thalami are not involved so that is what differentiates it from suppose i tell you cardiac arrest ke baad पेशेंट को कार्डियक अरेस्ट के बाद क्या होगा कार्डियक अरेस्ट के बाद हाइपॉक्सिक एनकेफ्लोपैथी हाइपॉक्सिक इस्केमिक एनसेफ्लोपैथी दैट कैन इन्वॉल्व योर थैलामस उसमें थैलामस में आएगा क्लासिकली हाइपॉक्सिक इस्केमिक पेरी रोलैंडिक एरियाज आर इन्वॉल्व सो दीज आर सम डिफरेंशियल्स यू नो दे कैन जस्ट चेंज अ केस एक एरिया चेंज कर दी आपकी क्लिनिकल uh, सिनारियो में दैट चेंजेस द डायग्नोसिस so this is your hypoglycemic encephalopathy okay this is your hypoglycemic encephalopathy patient might recover with the treatment of hypoglycemia okay which first image looks like the dawson's fingers are you talking about this one i don't see the dawson's fingers anywhere in the axial image at least your dawson's fingers should be like this perpendicular to the ventricle or maybe you guys are seeing it something different it's coming on the screen but i don't see anything there okay theek hai so remember this is hypoglycemic so this was case of the day an interesting case right 
Now coming to this one, so basically this was put to tell you that ये जो हमारा first patient था, an elderly female with known hypertension presents with altered sensorium following an episode of seizures. What is the diagnosis? So in this case, where you see bilateral occipital areas involved, you don't see anything in the basal ganglia, your insula, then it is your press. Okay, that is your press. Hypoglycemia status epilepticus, they will show your restricted diffusion. Because status epilepticus, cortex fire kar raha hai, cell bodies involved hai, cytotoxic, aapka restricted diffusion ho ga. Press mein restricted diffusion is not there. Okay, so remember that important point. Extra edge point for INICT exam particularly. Right, now this is a follow up of the patient after 7 days. Look at how the edema has decreased after 7 days. So, reversible. Okay, so reversible. Next one. So, ye hai jo humne pada about this. So, this is your bilateral posterior predominant white matter changes and lack of restricted diffusion in the parieto occipital regions. This is consistent with press. Hypoglycemia affects the cortex and all of these. But it has posterior limb of internal capsule, insular cortex and basal ganglia. It spares the cerebellum, brainstem and thalamus. Okay. So this is what you have to remember. Let's go to the next one here. Okay. Let's go to the next one here. Preterm neonate. Okay. So preterm neonate prior 32 weeks gestational age with bloody stools what is the diagnosis and the image has been given is it necrotizing enterocolitis is it intersusception or this is midgut volvulus all right so whenever you get this history of preterm neonate preterm neonate with bloody stools keep necrotizing enterocolitis in mind very very important it is your bloody stools even your intersusception the patient, the bachu can come with bloody stools. Midgut volvulus, it is not bloody stools. Midgut volvulus is more of bilious vomiting. Rather than the bloody stools, it is your bilious vomiting. And we have seen, what do we see in midgut volvulus? What do we see in midgut volvulus? Diodenum ka appearance kaisa hota hai in midgut volvulus? Volvulus twisted, so we get the corkscrew diodenum, right? We get the Corkscrew duodenum in midgut volvulus, right? Intersusception, intersusception. Why is this not intersusception? Look at the image. Okay, that is how clinical and radiology they come together. Together they can make a diagnosis. So look at the image. What do you see in the image? Target sign is present in intersusception where you have bowel within bowel appearance. Your necrotizing enterocolitis because of the edema of the wall can show the target sign. Absolutely. So we are seeing pneumatosis intestinalis. This has been asked previously. Pehle pucha gaya hai. So remember this can come again in your exam. So all this where you see air in the bowel wall. Okay. You see the edematous wall. This is the air in the bowel wall. So all this is pneumatosis intestinalis. Now tell me what are the other features? You know what staging is used for necrotizing enterocolitis? You have stage 1, you have stage 2, you have stage 3. What staging is used? What is the name of the staging used for necrotizing? Very correct. It is your bell staging. So you have modified bell staging which takes into consideration the radiographic radiologic signs as well. First is your pneumatosis intestinalis. Or kya hota pneumatosis intestinalis ke baad? Is it pneumobilia or is it your portobilia? Matlab your gas in the portal system. What do we see? So this air, mottled air, jaisa appearance, soap bubble, jaisa appearance dega, linear streaks dega. It is air in the portal system. Okay, it is air in the portal system. So basically the bowel is getting necrotizing. Necrosis ho raha hai, infection ho raha hai. Bowel wall mein se air ja raha hai aapka mesentric vein mein. 
superior mesenteric vein splenic vein forming the portal vein so the air goes into the portal vein not into the biliary system okay not into the biliary system so it is not pneumobilia nahi hota hai air goes into the portal venous system okay and what else do we see because of the necrosis thin wall of the bowel perforation ho sakta hai pneumoperitoneum ho sakta hai ascites is there which is present early pneumoperitoneum if present it is the last stage of your necrotizing enterocolitis that needs surgery it is your stage 3b okay that's your stage 3b when pneumoperitoneum is present now how do we differentiate okay how do we differentiate whether this is air in the biliary system or air in the portal vein radiologically the difference is portal vein goes till the periphery till the liver surface pneumobilia is more in the center it does not go in the periphery okay that is how we differentiate pneumobilia kis mein dekhta hai aaj radiology class mein we saw regular striated gallstone ileus right regular striated has a component of pneumobilia right post ercp we might see pneumobilia post procedure okay so in your necrotizing enterocolitis the baby presents with distension of the abdomen bloody stools all this we are seeing your distended bowel loops you can see the edematous bowel loops and in this in this radiograph where are we seeing pneumatosis intestinalis look at this area okay look at this area surrounding the bowel wall you have the air here might not be very much appreciable here there are some black lucencies here that is the air in the portal venous system now we have taken this radiograph can someone tell me why have we taken this radiograph in the bachu here of necrotizing enterocolitis why have we taken lateral decubitus and what do you think this radiograph is it right lateral decubitus or is this left lateral decubitus is this right lateral decubitus or this is left lateral decubitus kaun sa lateral decubitus liya hai the purpose of taking lateral decubitus in necrotizing enterocolitis not pneumomediastinum it is basically for pneumoperitoneum dekhne ke liye so why do i call it this is left lateral decubitus because look at the lower aapke pelvic bones or lower limb ke bones so this is the foot end of the patient this is the head end of the patient so this side is down okay so imagine yourself lying down like this foot end here head end here and the patient is like this so this is the left side which is down also you can see the liver here the right side up so this is your left lateral decubitus which is done for to look for pneumoperitoneum jab hum left lateral decubitus karenge air will go on the right side the white liver will give a good contrast to the black air so that is why important previous year question for pneumoperitoneum we always do left lateral decubitus and not right lateral decubitus if you do right lateral decubitus air going on the left side already on the left side you have your air of the stomach air of the colon sab black black air ho jayega differentiate nahi hoga so do left lateral decubitus with a horizontal beam or with a vertical beam so you know the next question is always with decubitus it is your horizontal beam it is not vertical beam if you are lying like this the beam comes horizontal not vertical the beam comes horizontal so important question for pneumoperitoneum it is your left lateral decubitus with your horizontal beam of course the best the most sensitive is contrast ct oral contrast dekhe karenge theek hai now in this patient we do not see any pneumoperitoneum kuch black nahi dikh raha hai you can appreciate the pneumatosis intestinalis here the air in the bowel wall okay the air in the bowel wall so this is what is your bell staging at least my job radiographic signs so in your stage 1 it is these findings it can be normal or there might be intestinal dilatation that is what we see in your stage 2 aapka stage 2a hai stage 2b hai you have pneumatosis intestinalis and we have ascites okay and we have ascites stage 3b is the one which is the last stage and it gets your 
pneumoperitoneum in stage 3b in stage 3b it is pneumoperitoneum and it requires surgery okay and it requires surgery so remember pneumoperitoneum is stage 3b and it requires surgery all right baki sab aapka upar hai so this was necrotizing enterocolitis okay this was necrotizing enterocolitis this similar findings of course we can see in adult patients also who have bowel wall infarction jahan pe bowel wall infarction hai look at the findings here how you can see the air in the portal system very well see look at the pneumoperitoneum the black air in the lung window we can see the pneumoperitoneum very well we can see the air here look at the air reaching in the periphery of the liver that tells you ki portal system mein hai look at the air reaching up to the liver surface that tells you that this is in the portal system what is this can someone tell me what is this that we are seeing surrounding the liver ye gray gray color ka dikh raha hai that is ascites okay the gray color is ascites look at the air in the bowel wall pneumatosis intestinalis look at the air in the bowel wall again seen well in your lung window pneumatosis intestinalis so this is an adult patient with bowel infarction aapka mesenteric vein thrombosis usme ye sab findings dikhega okay all these findings will be seen right last image for the day so to sum up the session this is a spotter image can someone tell me what is the diagnosis here so to give you an orientation orientation dene ke pehle let's see who identifies ultrasound image hai kya dikh raha hai yahan pe no scalloping of liver border that is seen uh, nishu that is seen in pseudo myxoma peritoni okay the mucinous neoplasms appendix ka mucosal okay ovary ka mucinous neoplasm it's seen in mucinous neoplasms okay so you guys are very very smart before even joining your radiology residency you all are half radiologist already so this is the ultrasound image showing the kidney okay that's the kidney there and what is the diagnosis what is the diagnosis here kuch abnormal dikh raha hai kidney mein if you have seen the normal kidney ultrasound image mm, no that's a good guess uh, satyapati that's a good guess emphysematous pyelonephritis but i will say this is not emphysematous emphysematous matlab air dikhega if you see air yes it will be hyperechoic but it will show the artifacts shadowing hona chahiye reverberation hona chahiye wo sab nahi dikh raha hai adp kd kahan se ho gaya polycystic kidney disease you will see the cyst how do cyst appear on ultrasound fluid on ultrasound is black it is not white cyst fluid is an echoic clear fluid is an equate you don't see the black colored cyst here right you don't see the black black cyst that is amazing so we have someone called draw with dr sagar very very correct this is your medullary nephrocalcinosis amazing that is very very amazing so what do we see here in this image is these are all your abnormal areas these are the echogenic pyramids ये जो व्हाइट व्हाइट एरियाज दिख रहे हैं दीज आर द इकोजेनिक इकोजेनिक मतलब हाइपर इकोइक पिरामिड्स सो दैट इज योर मेड्यूलरी नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस कैल्शियम अपियर्स हाइपर इकोइक राइट द स्टोन इफ यू रिमेंबर अपियर्स हाइपर इकोइक हाउ डू वी डिफ्रेंशिएटेड फ्रॉम द नेफ्रोलिथियासिस जनरली दिस नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस डज नॉट गिव योर पोस्टीरियर अकाउस्टिक शेडोइंग बिकॉज इट इज नॉट वेरी वेरी डेंस it does not give your posterior acoustic shadowing so even in studies they have shown that ultrasound is better than ct to identify your medullary nephrocalcinosis kyunki ye calcium itna dense nahi hai but ultrasound can identify by the hyperechoic appearance so this is your medullary nephrocalcinosis which metabolic abnormality nephrocalcinosis hai hypercalcemia mein ho sakta hai it can be seen in hypercalcemia medullary sponge kidney hypervitaminosis d parathyroid abnormalities hyperparathyroidism all of these where you have increased calcium can lead to medullary nephrocalcinosis why not cortical cortex aapka upar hai ye aapka pyramid hai these are ecogenic pyramids so remember this term when they tell you ecogenic pyramids 
it is your medullary nephrocalcinosis which has multiple causes okay which has multiple causes absolutely right rachana so the ivp appearance in your medullary sponge kidney on ivp plus course radiology mein dekha hai it gives the paint brush appearance or bouquet of flowers appearance right so that is how will putty kidney appear midhun manoj putty kidney is your entirely calcified kidney right it is entirely calcified so you will see that the entire kidney will be very very white including the cortex medulla everything and because it is calcified densely it will show the posterior acoustic shadowing here it is only your pyramids which are ecogenic wahan pe pura kidney aapka white ho jata hai the entire kidney is white right so this is about the today's session guys and some interesting challenging cases in radiology uh let me know if you found the session interesting you know to break the monotony kuch extra dekh liya thoda clinical dekh liya so we can have more such sessions okay we can have more such sessions and we'll be having sessions uh, on the app every day i take at 5 pm the free live class and on the youtube channel here uh, 10 pm so remember 5 pm and 10 pm easy to remember 5 ka double kar do 10 वहाँ भी निमोनिक लगा दो सो फाइव पी एम एंड टेन पी एम इज वेयर आई एम गोइंग टू मीट यू एवरी डे फाइव पी एम ऑन दी एप एंड टेन पी एम ऑन द यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुमारो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द रेडियोलॉजी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन नॉट ओनली योर सी टी चेस्ट या चेस्ट एक्सरे वो तो होगा ही आई शो यू जस्ट द इमेजेस दैट कैन कम इन योर एग्जाम बिकॉज दैट इज द हॉट टॉपिक फॉर योर एग्जाम अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट द कॉम्प्लिकेशन दैट कैन अकर रेडियोलॉजिकली क्या क्या देखते हैं ब्रेन इमेजिंग में क्या देख सकते हैं म्यूकर माइकोसिस द रेडियोलॉजी पार्ट ऑफ म्यूकर माइकोसिस सो एवरीथिंग अबाउट कोविड नॉट ओनली लिमिटिंग टू द चेस्ट बट एवरीथिंग दैट इज व्हाट वील सी टुमारो एट 10 पी एम एंड फाइव पी एम टुमारो वी आर सीइंग सूचर्स लाइक फाइनली द डे हैज कम जहाँ हम सूचर्स सिंप्लीफाई करने वाले हैं सर्जरी पेंडिंग सिंस अ लॉन्ग टाइम सो आई टेल यू द ईजी ट्रिक्स टू रिमेंबर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ सूचर्स इन सर्जरी सो पाँच बजे सूचर्स और दस बजे कोविड फ्रॉम अ रेडियोलॉजिस्ट परस्पेक्टिव ऑल राइट सो थैंक यू सो मच म्यूकर माइकोसिस भी कवर होगा येस अंकिता टेल मी योर डाउट वॉट इज द डाउट ओके okay so ankita you can uh, uh, you can dm me as well your doubt if you have uh, uh, if you have any queries you can reach out to me personally as well on the telegram group as well all right so goodbye everyone thank you so much for joining in keep studying keep revising and keep winning and see you tomorrow at 5 pm good night and thank you bye